Well, none of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Children have to go back to the roots, yeah. None of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Children have to go back to the roots. I'm telling you now, the truth, the truth. Telling you, yeah, yeah, the truth, the truth. You have to go back to the roots, the roots. Go to the roots, to the roots. Yeah, man, you know, this is Benjamin out of the Smiling Coast, West Africa, Gambia, represent. For the one and only Abu, the big man, you don't know. The son in Ke Warrior, the man that brings the truth. Son in Ke Warrior, the sign of enlightenment. The son in Ke Warrior, the righteous and the true African. Abu, reveal the truth to them, you know. No matter how them try to run from it, because none of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Yes, we have to dig back the roots, yeah. Fire! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Afidamos Report. I want to welcome all of you to another edition of Xenophobia News, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys remember, you know, previously, I have given talks on xenophobia. And I've also addressed, you know, um, some of the quote-unquote reasons why the South Africans that came, not all of them, some of them, they claim why, you know, people are just accusing them of xenophobia. What is xenophobia for people who are new here? This word became popularized because from South Africa, let's keep it real. Because you see, when people talk about the KKK, you think of the Southern part of the United States. So these in South Africa, especially for the Nigerians and other African nationals, this word became popular because of the South African blacks. The South African blacks are worse than the KKK to their, to quote unquote, their fellow Africans. They said they don't want them in their country. They said the South, the Nigerians especially, are bringing crimes. You know, they are killing people for that reason. I opened the door to conversation and I was open to hearing different perspectives. But one thing I've also learned is many of the South Africans, they put emphasis on saying, you know, they stay in their country, they do not go to another country. We respect that. You say you want to protect your country? Great. That's fine. You see? But now, now, what about if it's another country? If these same South Africans are trying to export that same hatred that they call xenophobia, because you guys see, I'm not into the made up words like racism, xenophobia, it's all from hate. Is it possible that many South Africans have more beef and hatred for fellow Africans than they do for whites? I believe so. Just as you would see here in America, you know, the people who want to rely on the system because they feel like they are owed by that system. So if they cannot lift themselves by their bootstraps, they tend to accuse other people. Let me show you fresh rounds of the South African Hatred, Because you see, every time we turn around, when we hear xenophobia news on that continent, who is causing it? I'm not saying, hey, you have no right not to decide who comes to your country or not. But is South Africa a lawless country? Is it? It's so lawless to a point where now you have South Africans getting online. Not all, not all, but some. So they're no longer targeting, quote unquote, other Africans in their country, South Africa. The people who are not even in their country, because for example, us from West Africa, like I live, my country is closest to the United States than it is to South Africa in proximity, most of us. The only thing we have in common with South Africa, as far as I know, is just the skin color. 
our languages are not similar, our cultures are not similar, but somehow Nigerians go over there. Nigerians go everywhere. I think if we go to if you go to mass right now, you would find a Nigerian there. You can disagree with Nigerians, but to say you're gonna you know killing them, that's a no no. So we have to call it for what it is. Let me show you before I enter. I enter this voice we are about to analyze here because a South African man is going out of his way because many of them like to say they have similar history. Their history is similar to the blacks in the United States, which is, a, which is false. And I'm about to break that down here. I'm going to break that down before we leave. I'm going to give you the history of the South Africans and the blacks, their history is not the same. Different circumstances. But I will tell you, in the country of South Africa, the group whose history is similar to the blacks here. And I would explain all that. But this South African man is not satisfied, hate, just hating on the Nigerians or the other African nationals in his country, South Africa. Because we gave these people, some of these people the benefit of the doubt. We say, great, Africans, because these people hide behind skin color to say pan-Africanism. But now we're seeing that these people are just filled with hate, insecurity. They don't understand their identity. I know that in America, many, especially half-breeds, mixtures of different races, they hate their skin color, they hate their background. They hate everything about themselves. And that hatred is projected towards other people. But for some reason, for some odd reason, this hatred to be done in physical form, they waste more time to emit violence on fellow Africans. On fellow Africans. When South Africa was under apartheid, I was young, I was a kid, I remember. There were African, African country all over. Black Africa, because I was in the blackest Africa, West Africa, came together, you know, to show support for the country of South Africa. They have. And I still stick by my story when I said, you know, in the conversation when I said, to my fellow West Africans. No, leave the South Africans alone. You know, they did stand up and fight physically, but other Africans have shown support because you know, the blacks in America even supported them, to be honest, moral support. That's why when you talk to some of the blacks who don't understand geography, they don't understand history, they will say to you, we help you all Africans. No, you're talking about South Africa. Not me, you see, not me. And I respect that. But West Africans have also shown a lot of support, especially in Nigeria. You can go read, there. they were very vocal against the system that was putting their, their boots on the necks of the black South Africans. They have, right? But still, I don't believe South Africa owe them because they show moral support. But, you know, I think it's hospitable. It's hospitable, you know, to allow people to come to your country. Especially if you say you are all one and the same. Shouldn't we talk about that? But now these people are not only keeping that hate for other African nationals, especially Nigerians or West Africans, now they are following West Africans that are all the way in the United States. In the United States, all the way. Like the other day I heard another South African on one of the shows, somebody sent it to me. He said something, he came on there talking and I was like, look at these people. They sound like, you know, some of those, you know, blacks who are, who, who are not even aware of themselves. They're not even aware of what they are saying. Because the, the guy comes on, he's like, oh, I, I am more worried about 
you know, the, the white man that went is going around traveling miles to go shoot the, uh, uh, the blacks. He's all the way in South Africa, right? Now he's saying he's concerned. Sir, in your country, they hunt down other blacks, West Africans, by your own people that look like you. You've never been concerned about that. What a hypocrite. Why are you concerned about what is going on all the way in the United States? Saying, oh, a white man went and shot up a place, but you are worried. What about the Nigerians in your country? What about them? Let me show you proof. Fresh new xenophobia is still going up. Still going up. But you are over here pretending, saying, oh, I'm worried about, you know, white men going around shooting. No, you guys are going around killing and burning Nigerians and other Africans. But you, now what you are expressing to us, what you are expressing, and I'm not talking about all the South Africans. This is why I said the South African man. I want people to listen because I also played a video where I did the analysis where this man, a black guy, the nomad guy went to South Africa, right? He was talking to a South African man trying to get free land. I, just, I talk about that here. You see a South African man like that, his response, he has common sense. He is not a loser like the ones that I'm about to show here. So the reason why I'm showing this here today is to show you this xenophobia mindset, where it came from. Because the man, now the hatred cannot be contained. He wants to transport this savage behavior to the blacks in the United States. And the blacks and the South Africans do not have the same history. Because you know, the white man, came to America and found the Indian here. Guys, Indian, not the Indian with the dot, feather Indian. The white man, this wasn't a country, mind you, it was not. The white man took the land, they conquered, they, let's just, long story short, they built the country, they brought Africans here as slaves. And those Africans, did not be their, their, you know, their progeny, you know, their descendants who are the blacks today became citizens in 1868. You see, if there's a date when your group became citizen in a country, that means you did not find that country. That means you were brought there. You were either brought there or immigrated on your own. That's why there's a date on when you became a citizen to show you are not the ori you your origin is not from that land that's why you would never read anywhere you would never read anywhere in the books where they would put a date to say native americans this is when they became citizens just as in south africa in south africa they can tell you the white man showed up here in 1619, they are able to tell you because the white man is not original origin to that land. He's not the original man there. You, can you tell when the Zulus inhabited that country? Someone can try to make it up, but we don't know the date. That's because they are the original people there. So right then and there, their situation and the blacks situation not the same the blacks are from western central africa they were brought to this country by the white man for work purposes what did the white man do in south africa the white man conquered the african tribes there but they could not kill all of them right so the South Africa, the blacks, they came together. Their population is bigger. But the white man, just like in America, how they brought the Africans to work there, here as slaves, they brought 
Indians. Yes, the white man went to India. The Indians with the dot. Gandhi Indian. In fact, Gandhi used to live in South Africa. I bet some of you didn't know this. The white man went and brought Indians as servants to build the railroad as, you know, to work in that country. So right then and there, right? The blacks in America, right then and there have more in common historically with the Indians than with the blacks. Like the blacks there have more in common with the Dutch Indian, the feather Indian here, you know, Geronimo Indian. They have more in common with the blacks in South Africa than with the blacks here. The blacks have more in common with Gandhi Indians than the blacks in South Africa. Because you see this video that I'm about to play, this video that I'm about to play, the South Africans have to make up their mind. Because if they are saying the way the blacks should think in America and behave towards America, then they should be okay with the Indians to act that way and feel deserving of that position. Because the, just as the Indians were brought to South Africa, the blacks were brought to America the same way for the same reason. So if the South Africans are saying this, that's just hypocritical. We should call it out. They are being hypocritical. Running around here talking about, oh, we're the same as FBA. No, you are not the same. You're not the same. There's no reason to try to transport this xenophobic hatred against West Africans. Yeah, you can disagree with the Nigerians, but when you try to transport this, we have to call it out. And today I'm going to call out a whole lot of things. But before I get into this show, let me give my copyright warning because I have a, several videos to show here. Here we go. All right, we got the copyright out the door. And now let me play this South African man's calling, what he is calling for. I'm not worried that the blacks are all of a sudden going to be savages like them running around in a lawless country. I would like to see them try. I would like to see them try. You see, America is a lawful country. It's about law and order. You can disagree. You can live in your fantasy world. But I would, I don't see blacks gathering up, taking machete, saying, let's go look for Africans. Your average black person is not thinking about African. You think African is their problem? You think they are worried about some African guy or some African woman? They are not. It's the ones that, you know, who associate with Africans, maybe in their work area or in their line, you know, field, whatever, where these Africans or origin from Africa beat them at their own game. So since many of these blacks were used to getting things without deserving it, because you know, affirmative action, because at some point you see when the rubber meets the road, you know, they you would be dropped out you see this is why it's very dangerous to just allow somebody to just give you things because whatever they give you they can take from you it's just simple anything even this is why when i hear people carelessly talking about oh white supremacy i want you know my freedom if you want freedom nobody can give you freedom you gotta take that freedom because anything they give you Anything anyone gives you, they'll take it from you. We had this conversation, the same, the, the guy, his voice sounds similar. They said, 
you West Africans, what have you guys done? You have, you know, you have been, you know, free. You have been independent for many, many years, over 50 years. You guys are useless. We're like, great. Some of the West Africans came, they say South Africa. You would have been, your country would have been way worse than us if the white man did not build it. And the people, they go back and forth. But we, me personally, I don't know that for sure. I'm just going by what is today. What is today, that's, that's what I'm going by. So I'm not gonna say, look, if the white man didn't come to South Africa and stay there, they wouldn't be as industrialized as they are. We don't know that for sure, right? But the white man contributed big time. They built the place. I guess us Africans, deep down, those of us that have sense, we can look around Africa and see where the white man kicked back, what the place looked like, and where the white man barely can step his foot on the soil. And you see, us West Africa, you guys called our, our area dusty and all. We accept it. But one thing with us, we are adventurous. You in South Africa, you don't want to travel, you don't want to learn. Great. You don't want, you are saying, we are not invited to South Africa. We say, great. But you know who opened their arm and said, come to the place I built? The white man. So now the white man say, come to America. We come to America. So now you are following us. You are spreading propaganda about us. Here we go. Let me play this man's video. So you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And I know not all South Africans share his sentiment. Like Christopher King, a friend of the show, he doesn't share this. You know, from what I know, he always calls the nonsense app. But here we go. Let's hear what this man said to the Eidos FBI. And you know, those Eidos people too, some of these people, I'm confused by them. I'm sure you'll be confused too when you see who they are. You don't know if they are Eidos or they are Pan-Africans. One minute, like it's interchangeable. You would see them taking trips to African countries and say, come to Africa. They would even insult the other Eidoses. But then on their platforms, they would still, they enjoy nothing more than this type of talk against Africans, not just any African, West Africa. You know, most of these people, they like the idea of going to West Africa. They love West Africa without the West African people themselves. But how is that possible? Just like when the white man, the white man loves South Africa, but without the South African in it, right? It didn't go well. So same thing. And let me play this video. You will understand exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I'll greet everyone on the panel. But hey, look, I'm just, I'm just going to be quick. I'm here to tell my uh, American brothers and sisters of the slave descendants that look guys, you guys have to fight for your people, your own group first and protect them by all costs. I understand where you guys come from and I can see what's going on, but most of the problem is, the biggest problem is this is done by your government at the government level. The problem is you guys don't own that country, even though you played part in building it. So guys, already, right? despite this guy admitting everything oh yeah i know the country you know um despite you contributed to the build-up of it but it's not your country black americans are americans Jeez. black americans are americans that's why i keep pushing that here to get it through your skull you are an american how are you going to allow some nincompoop all the way in South Africa to try to tell you what you should be doing for you and your people? And when people say, this my people, black community, no such thing. No such thing. I keep at, where's these black communities that he speak of? America is an individualistic mindset country. Just come here and see for yourself. 
But let's allow this guy to continue. To continue this. St. James and Lozi, loser in Solinke. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You could tell it, my language. Let's allow this guy to continue spewing his hatred. Because he doesn't know black Americans are American. He thinks he's a... If you look at a black American who's been here, they became citizens in 1868. That's a long time. So let's just say, okay, that's when they officialize it. But who cares? Black people, those, the black people you're talking to, they've been here longer than 1868. But the real insult, he doesn't even, you look at a black American and say to them, Oh, I know the country is not you guys' is. That's an insult. Because a black, that's why you're saying black American. That means they are Americans. So let's continue. You are my, part of my notes. If I was running that country, I would do everything that you guys want because you guys deserve the most and you haven't been getting the most. So I will say that with, with African immigrants that are coming there, I've been looking at this problem for the while, for the, for a while now. And online, most people who come for black americans are africans and they the ones who started this for most what i see now american black americans are retaliating okay this man he's never left south africa right from what we could tell but he is opening his mouth he said if he could do anything for the blacks so meaning the blacks the blacks are so much in a state of disarray, so so poor that, you know, him in South Africa, he is feeling so sorry for the blacks that if there's anything he could do for them, he would do it. This man should be doing that in South Africa because he's not going to leave South Africa. Oh, KBM, thank you for the $2 super chat. Said Afridamus report, the truth channel. That's right. Thank you very much. So the man never left South Africa. He is now, you see the mindset of a xenophobe? Are you guys seeing the mindset of a xenophobe? How is this type of things probably fermented against other Africans that get attacked in that country? So, it is no longer to say, oh, the Nigerians in my country, oh, no. Now you are following, trail, you are trailing the Nigerians, not just the Nigerians, now West Africans in general. You are following us, talking crazy, lying about us in a country where we are invited to. Unlike, even, not like South Africa, because you can't accuse us of saying, we are in your country, we're not there. You, we're not there. But he is lying because he said Africans, immigrants, are the problem. But I'm going to play to show maybe he's talking about his fellow South African. I have videos. I will play that here. Let's see the type of immigrant, he African immigrant, he's quote-unquote talking about. I will point out his hypocrisy. There's no black nation that I've seen that put black people at the front more than black Americans in my entire life. The Africans that come there just like any immigrant, they come there for themselves. They don't give a fuck about you guys. And the moment you guys start to realize that you will get it, you will get it. They come in there for their stomach. We failed to run this continent. There is no way. These people are here for themselves. We are one. So, he's saying black immigrants Anyone that come to America, it doesn't have to be black immigrant, any immigrant. Yes, people are for themselves. Why is that a, a crime? If they are not destroying the country, they are bringing new skills, they are creating jobs or contributing and they are invited by that government. But you see these people, somebody like him, this is why you gotta allow them to speak because you want to hear the mindset. This man has been, he thinks this way. He sits with his people. They discuss things like this. That's why he's comfortable coming out here, spewing 
this hate and lies. This man doesn't have that much energy against the Boers. Look, in apartheid was D. W. F. Clark. Was he a West African? Was this was this a Igbo man? Was he a Yoruba? Was he a Mandinka? Was he a, 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 from any of the Akan tribes? Or from any of those regions? No. But why? What's with the hatred? In fact, I saw a video news clip where a white woman was even asking that question to a South African. And the white woman even said, why do I, why am I safe? Imagine being safer, being safer with the night riders instead of the people that look like you. This is why I say the race thing is fake. It's what's in the heart. If you hate one, you hate, you hate all. You would find every reason in the book to hate someone. And you know, the problem is these people that talk about this FBA thing, they've reduced themselves to where now people like this hate monger have to feel sorry for them. They have to feel you, you know, tell you things thinking that's what you want to hear. He's telling you, talking to you like you're some desperate woman. You know, I wish I was the president. I would have done more for you guys. But, you know, you guys would have had more if it wasn't for those, uh, those Akatas. Those Akatas from West Africa. That's, those are the people. But let's let him spew more of his garbage. One of the most tribalistic continent. We are tribal. When they come there, they're gonna use these tactics to rise to the polit pol pol political uh, influence. And the government of America wants that as well. So you guys need to be in call for your people and protect your people by all costs. Don't allow them to blackmail you with words like you as an or, 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 or what, what, what. It's survival of the fittest. If you guys don't get this right and allow people to divide you, it's going to be chaos. So what you need to understand is that you are a black American first. That's your nation. And then secondly, you are black. Then we can unite all at that level. But your people first. Shouldn't, shouldn't he? Do you notice? Oh, you're black first. We unite as black. Last I checked, those people you guys are burning up are black too. But it didn't save them. You put the tires over them and burn them up. This is a fact. I'm not making this up. Can't you guys hear it in this man's voice? Wouldn't you guys see him doing such a thing to another African, quote unquote, immigrant in his country? It starts from the mind and then they act on what's on their mind. Look, I'm just keeping it real. We, lately, it's like so much hatred. So much hatred for, for somebody who's never left their country. But he has so much smoke for, especially West Africans. Now he's trolling and following them all the way to America. Sir, we, can, we come to America because our countries are closer to America. We feel safer. I like being in my neighborhood. The Nigerians, they left the neighborhood. They went to South Africa. And now we are seeing what happened. I believe in the neighborhood. Eric B said, this guy sounds like a white guy trying to cause trouble among us. Eric B, I don't know, but, you know, um, <laughs> there is, if he's white, I'll have to show you real videos to show that you don't have to be white to think this way. White South Africans, we've never seen videos of them, you know, harassing anybody to say they are foreigners. We have not seen it. But we see it with the blacks all the time. In fact, let me show you the latest. Here's the latest. No, let me finish this and I'll show you 
the latest what is going on. And Eric B, thank you for the five dollar super chat. Yes. Don't make a mistake. When I say this, if you look at Europe, you go to Europe, the British, the Irish, the French, the Spanish, they group themselves first, and that's how they build their empires. I'm saying we are all black. We are definitely all African, but we come with our own nation. I'm a South African first, and beyond that, I'm black. Black Americans today, they stand as a nation, and this is the strongest black nation on earth. Black, there's no such nation called Black American nation. The moment you put American there, that means they are straight just American. The Black Americans do not have their own nation called Black American nation. So guys, guys, you see how these people, people like him, they live in a fantasy. This man is bringing his own imagination and you know his fantasy and thinking it's true. Maybe the people he's talking to, that's how they think as well. The thinking is very juvenile. You know, I've been telling you guys, I go by the constitution of the United States. You have some blacks who's, who don't wanna respect the constitution. If they abolish that constitution, your citizenship might disappear too. Do you want to try that? I bet you don't want to. So the constitution is fine. This man doesn't know laws. He doesn't understand how things happen here. But let's let him tell us. Now you will understand why it's easy. Where he's from, people can just gather with machetes, you know, and attack other people. Because he's not thinking in terms of law and order and humanity. He doesn't care. It's too sad that they don't own a country of their own. But this is the richest nation that we all look up to as black people. And I've seen so many black people talking shit about black Americans. For me, black Americans, even online, they're one of the most welcoming people. Even on this panel, you can hear they've been cursing black Americans. They've been shouting on them. And the, most of them are just handling it because they're just taking it in. They're just taking it in. We need to reflect as people. We have failed on the continent. That's a fact. These people who are running to America, they're running there because they've allowed the colonizers to continue messing up our continent. If those Oh, so you're saying the people that are running there, sir, Africa, where the Africa we come from is not colonized. That place have been freed way before I was born. Way before I was born. So you see, the problem is, this is one thing I like about most Nigerians. They do not live in the past. They live in the present. I think that's why some, some, some of that makes many people annoyed with them. And people get annoyed with me because I believe in living in the present. Why would I pretend and act like I know what it's like to be colonized when I have never experience colonization why would i pretend it's like someone pretending to be a slave you've never been enslaved that's the dumbest thing like you're saying colonization means they're taking your your freedom away so i was born free i didn't see any white man telling me to do anything because maybe that's their idea of colonization i didn't they didn't sit me there my they're like hey son you know, the white people, they colonized us before. So you be careful, you are a colonized person. That's not what happened. I'm a free person. I'm not going to regress and pretend like I am not. But this man is living in a country that had a history of apartheid, which is more brutal than colonization a system by their government. So he's no longer apartheid ended in 94. But mentally, this man wants to act like he is oppressed. So therefore, he, since black people in America, not all, not all, but most say they are oppressed, maybe they have that connection, but not historically. If this continent was standing, we wouldn't be fighting for leftovers there in America as people. And we are not giving dignity to black Americans because our continent is not on order. 
and we are busy here fighting to fit in in America and fight for left leftovers there while we can fix our continent why are we running to America to allow the government of America to use our black skins to speak for black Americans there we have oh okay so let's be real this man doesn't know what he is talking about so let's look at the type of African the type of African that was ordered specifically to speak on behalf of uh, black Americans to interfere in the United States internal elections, internal affairs. I'm about to show you if these people, because now it sounds like he's ignoring this. There's a South African named Trevor Noah on Comedy Central, do you know, the satirical talk. They brought Tre Trevor Noah specifically to America to undermine American system. Let me show you the things Trevor Noah talks about, the type of topics, you know, ridiculing American, a sitting American president. Mind you, these people killed fellow Africans in their country just for simply saying those people took their job. Imagine if those people participated in their electoral affairs. Imagine that, even if they had papers to be there. So I'm about to show you who is definitely used to undermine black Americans, not only black Americans, American elections in general. Africa is the future. Thank you for the five pounds super chat. He said, now the focus has been turned to Zimbabweans with the operation Dudula. Look it up. He is from Lozi tribe, their kingdom headquarters, headquartered in West Zambia. Wow. Okay. Let's see here. Thank you. Thank you. Ayoba said, Afridamus, so you in America because of South Africans and you didn't feel safe in Gambia because of, <laughs> no. Yeah, according to him. Well, I just came back from Gambia. I obviously feel very safe there. But for somebody who doesn't travel, that's why they come, they, they would try to shame people for traveling. I'm like, <laughs> who, who, uh, who shames a traveler? Do you, do you hear how dumb you sound? You sound ridiculous. But here, let's show the type of person and what country they are from that was brought here to undermine Americans, if they are West African or not. Here, Trevor. This is General Flynn, a four-star general, who, for whatever reason, American political shenanigan, Trevor Noah is not an American citizen. He cannot vote in American elections. Do you want to tell me they could they cannot find a half-breed Ados person, FBA or whatever they call themselves, who is funny and can do these satirical jokes? At least the person is an American. They understand the culture. Trevor Noah is not from West Africa. He is not. He's not. But imagine a West African going, going to South Africa. One of the political parties, the other section, some four-star general, let's say me, Afridamus, I live in Johannesburg, and I'm talking about this. You know, just laughing, thinking I'm just all, all here. I'm the funniest South African comedian. Trevor Noah took jobs from the blacks. Let's just keep it real. He took jobs from the blacks. But this guy talking, he can't even see that. But he is pointing at, oh, they bring these, these Africans come there to, take, to undermine you. What African do you see on TV even undermining American politics? At least I have the right to speak on this because I am an American citizen. Trevor Noah is not an American. This is dangerous. Imagine in an election of foreigner on a syndicated, like 
Comedy Central is mainstream. You are on there. The things you are saying, you are being used to undermine the electoral process in that country. He talks bad about white people in their own country that they built. I didn't see any white people saying, let's go kill the South Africans. They're not even thinking it as a freedom of speech. But wouldn't you see Trevor as imported? A foreign African imported to speak for blacks. Trevor speaks for the blacks. I don't know any popular West African that speaks for the blacks. If you have one on mainstream, bring it to me. Show me one. Show me. You guys see that, right? So I guess he's not aware of Trevor Noah, right? I guess he's not aware of Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah makes millions of dollars. The job that he took, that could have gone to some, you know, Ados person. It could have gone to some half-breed Ados person. Look, we have shortages of everything in America except half-breeds. We have tons of them. And there's a ton of them that are funny. I've seen them. So if you want to talk about, you know, somebody taking your job, taking your opportunity, this would be the perfect example. Got no business in their business there. They stood there for 400 years and fought and died for that land. We didn't help them. We were here and we were getting fucked as well here. And we continue to get fucked. We are more than 1.2 billion on this continent. We must have shame. And people like you too, Niger, who are here trying, you are in Britain. You followed your master there. And you're busy talking shit about me, saying I'm dividing people. I'm saying we must be responsible. And if we can build this continent, we will restore dignity that black Americans deserve there. The government is not respecting them because the continent of their origin is also getting fucked by them. That's why they don't respect them. And you guys are allowed to go there and allow the same government to use you against them. This is, this is not fair. So, we saw it, right? Who are they using? We obviously see it. That You see, he, he, he told Two Niger. Two Niger followed his, max, his master. This is what Two Niger gets. Because, you see, Two Niger wants to be talking in circles, being hypocritical, talking. Because, you see, when he talks about, you know, try to make it about skin color, I don't know why Two Niger does that. But now this man, you know, Tunaja, he's accusing him of following his quote unquote master. No, Tunaja didn't follow his master. Tunaja doesn't have a master. Tunaja went to the white man's land. It's not because he's fascinated with the white man. That much I can tell you. I don't know the man, but being from Nigeria, I can tell you right now. He is not there because he's fascinated with the white man. Tunaja was just blowing smoke up all these people's ass, but now that came in full circle and beat him. He went to the UK or wherever he is traveling. He is there because, quote unquote, his master have greener pasture. The white man came to Nigeria when they needed, you know, greener pasture. So... They made themselves open, known to the to Africans. Why should they just be able to take the trade, benefit, and leave? Of course, Two Niger is gonna follow them. He discovered this is where you know he wants to know how the white men were able to come and you know take over. He's studying, but now the man is accusing him of following his master. Where did that come from? Because of his pandering ways. This is why I advise people, do not pander. Do not become, quote unquote, talking about you, you are uniting with people based in lies. This man, the way he sounded, he's talking about blackness, blackness. He's hiding behind blackness while he wants to 
block other black people. Talking about black Americans deserve this, they deserve that. Nobody deserves anything other than what they fight for, period. That's just human, human beings. No group thinking. You will get what you deserve, plain and simple. Christopher Ken said, the Afridamus report, the UK is a terrible country. It is definitely not like living in the United States. Yes, that's true. I, you know, the UK is one of the places I would never move to. It's not in my list, you know. But I understand why Tunaj is bitter. I can hear it in his voice when he even called. His destination is the United States. That's why you would never hear him talk about, you know, UK that much. So that alone tells me, you know, what I need to know. But the guy, this guy, the South African, you know, Tuna was trying to talk him into saying they are all one and the same. There's all kinds of immigrants to the U.S., all kinds of immigrants, even into his country in South Africa. But it is never, um, it is never, oh, those people, those people are not running away, right? Those people are not following masters. But deep in his mind, he thinks Tunaja has a master because he sees white people as his master. He said Africans are tribalists. He's talking about his country, I bet. Because the type of things I used to see even from South Africa where, you know, two tribes would fight, like the Zulu and other, even other South Africans, they used to have wars. They would fight. Remember, you know, Chief Butelezi, Chief Butelezi, you know, that's how I knew those names because they are fighting with each other. I'm talking bloodshed in my part of Africa, where I'm from. I've never seen that. Maybe, you know, in, 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 you know, for the West, some of those countries you would see it, but in my part of Nigeria, uh, not Nigeria, part of the world, I've never seen people go and fight each other, you know, kill each other, because they, because of tribalism, because they are from different tribe. This man is projecting his own negativity onto us. This is why I say it's dangerous when people start talking about this blackity black thing. Not all black people are the same. People need to stop this. You have somebody like him that thinks sick like this, and you want you want me to accept that you know uh, me and him were the same tribe. No, the guy is sick in the head. He's exhibiting it. Here, let me show you the latest, latest news here. Let me show you on, um, on, on, on this xenophobic thing. Let me show you here. You see the news headline? You guys see the news headline there? This is in South Africa. An old man said, foreigners must go back home. He said, again, South Africa, new campaign reignites xenophobic rhetoric. Xenophobic rhetoric. So this guy, now they want to extend their campaign all the way to the U.S. Look at it here. The Dudula, I think this is the one that, you know, whoever in the chat was talking about, you know, but thanks to um, St. James, you know, um, sending this to me. Thank you. And the video say so hashtag put South Africans first. So you see, guys, you guys see the evidence. He thinks South Africa is like the United States. Now, does it make sense how he's talking? Is it making sense? So not only he, the, the, like this guy, he wants Africans harassed. You guys see, you see in these pictures here, you see this? These are the black foreigners. But some of you were acting like, oh, in Ukraine, you guys saw a couple of blacks, a couple of Africans, and you guys want to cry foul. What do you guys have to say to this? What do you guys have to say to this? Now, do you guys see how it makes sense why this guy sounds the way he sounds? The Kyo said, if you can come to the U.S. and leave your dream 
So can Trevor, regardless of citizenship. Stop being a hypocrite, Afridamas. Dikio, you are not getting the point, Dikio. Dikio, this man, I, I am not against Trevor Norris' hustle. I'm just pointing out that. Here in America, the laws, the people are way more open-minded. You could come here and live your dream. But his dream, if we go by Lozzy, he's here interfering. His job is to you know, spread propaganda against the opposite side. So that is, he should be accusing his fellow South African rather than, you know, saying it's, it's, uh, it's other, you know, blacks from elsewhere. I have no issues with uh, Trevor. Hey, Trevor can get his money. But when his countrymen gives an example of an African that's possibly fitting his role, he fits that role. He fits that role. Let me show you another video that I've shown you before. You know, um, since he said two Niger followed his master, right? Let me show you the mindset. If two Niger believes in the white people as his master, oh, there's people physically in South Africa that show this. Let's go. It's going to take a lot to change their minds about foreigners in South Africa. All these men are out of work, and they put that down to the outsiders, who sell their goods and their labor much more cheaply. These people, they work for 80 rand a day, 90 rand a day. It's fine for them because when you go to his country, it's a lot of money. But for us, it's too small. So we are no longer getting jobs anymore because of the salary we're looking for understand these people they are accepting small money so they are ruining us in each and every side of ours we attack them with the knives everything much so you guys see you hear the lawless talk so how many lighter skin europeans other race that come to south africa that dominate this group of people but they only see the other Africans. Hear how he gladly explains how they hurt fellow Africans. Just hear it out. Yes, yes ma'am, because we are very, very angry because we can't accept that. And what makes you think that's okay to attack another human being with a machete? Because these people, if they attack us also, late time they use these things they use guns they also blame the foreigners for the high crime rate and their version of justice is meted out pretty quickly paraffin is easy to catch fires it's flammable if i put it on the tire the tire is what is catching fire and, I put and you'll put there. this on Where on the person and what you guys hear this ayuba said old video but we still support oppression look this video fits well this video will never be old. I just showed you a news clip here that fits this. So I'm not giving it to you as a current news. I'm giving it to you as the mindset. The mindset here. When, while we're beating you, you are very weak. I get you can't fight back. Even though even I can take this tire by one and took it to like this. Yeah. You are very weak. Let me say this for an asthma school. And guys. Those of you that are from West Africa, let's be honest. Imagine some African, West African country, for instance, a citizen of one of, in, in our region there, they do this to other Africans and they're bragging about it, saying how they put the tires on them. Guys, come on, let's be real. Let's be real. It's not gonna go well. Other West African, countries around there, all the neighbors, other people, then we're not going to go for this. You guys know this. You guys know this. But they are happily telling you what they do to fellow Africans. Come back legally. All around where we're talking, there is appalling deprivation. The men are unashamed at their bitterness towards the foreigners, and many, they say, are inside South Africa illegally without visas or even passports. What happens if they don't go? If they don't go, they will get a piece of this. 
were born and their shops will be looted. But I'm also a foreigner in your country. I'm British and I'm working in your country. Yes. Does that mean you'd attack me? No, because you are not doing the bad things. Did you guys hear this? Did you guys hear this? The woman even said, but I'm a foreigner. How come you're not do, do, doing it to me? Say, but you're not doing bad thing. I'm, the woman's like, I'm here working in your country. Didn't they say those people come there to work? But they're not going to attack the woman. You would think the type of smoke, when they, these people talk about blackness, blackity blackness, they would have, when they're telling you about the boys, you would think more smoke would go for the white skin. But that's not what it is. You know? It's just hatred. Christopher said, but they just burnt two, two women, Afridamas in northern Nigeria. What is the difference? Those That's different. Those women are Nigerians. That's in internal Nigerian issue. Their Islamic law there, you know? In Nigeria, they're not going after foreigners and burning them. So it's not the same. That's within their custom there in northern Nigeria. She violated the Sharia law. I'm not saying I agree or disagree. That's what their law is over there. I don't, you know, but it's not, it's not the same thing. It's not the same. The xenophobic violence has turned into a political weapon. One of the leaders of the opposition visited Alexandra Township the night before the army was ordered in. Gunshots were fired ahead of his arrival and three supporters were injured. Why do you think they're doing it? What is to blame for this? Well, uh, our people are in poverty yeah. and uh, they get tempted to believe simplest solution. But if we drive away the foreigners, we will work tomorrow. But the reality is that there are no jobs. Even if these people leave, we'll still be unemployed. You know, that's one of the, you know, the fake, you know, pan-Africanist leaders there over, you know, in that country. So people, I'm going to drop the link. I want to have this conversation. Let me drop the link. Come in, please. Stick with the topic. Um, and yeah, stick with the topic and we should be good. But before we go into that, let's take a short intermittent break and... I would be. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Yeah. Baby girl, love my bop and I like me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen, don't stop, shit ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl, love my bob, and I like me too. No roof on my top, and my babe see through. Hating on the pen, don't stop, shit ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Big flex, my swole up. Double cup, and I'm pulled up. Niggas hating like hold up. What's the problem? I'm pulled up. Exactly, guys. You see. Now we have the link in the chat there. Please hit the link, come on in, share your idea with us here about what you've heard. Is this from a place of deep hatred? Why is somebody like him, not only is he complaining about West Africans in his country or other African nationals, he is now trying to foment xenophobic hatred and savagery, try to, you know, build that in the quote unquote FBA people. The FBAs have enough problems as it is. They have enough issues as it is. They have enough people to hate on. Why you want to add this? Onto it. There's no need for it. So, guys, I notice you guys are not hitting the link. Don't be afraid. Don't say Afridamus did not give 
people the chance to come here. Okay? I'm giving everyone the chance to come in and share. Share your opinion. What do you think? Where do you think this problem came from? And NTGO said, exactly, Afridamus, thank you. That is an internal Nigerian issue. Nigerians don't attack foreigners. Yeah, it's not the same thing. We have our first caller. Let's bring the person in. Kid Ola, welcome to the Afridamus Report. Tell us where you're calling from. Hey, Afridamus, I'm from Nigeria. I live in Nigeria, brother. You live in Nigeria? Thank you for calling in. Yeah. King Ola. Yeah. Is it Kid, Kid yeah. Ola? Kid Ola, can Kid you Ola, tell yeah. Kid Ola, uh, can you uh, ex yeah, uh, turn, turn that off behind? Yeah. Is it Kid Ola? Kid Ola, can you turn that off behind? Now what? What to turn off? I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Now what? What to turn off? I don't know. Do you do you have both open? Uh, you know when, when you hit the I'm link. I'm using my laptop. I'm using my laptop. Okay, so you know the 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 YouTube X out of the YouTube. Just leave the the stream yard X. You know where you were watching. X okay. that one out. Okay, wait. Okay, let me ask of the YouTube. Yeah. Ask of the YouTube. Wait. Let me. Where you were watching. X that one out. Okay. 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 Wait. Okay. Let me ask of the YouTube. Okay. Are you hearing me? Loud. Much better now. King, okay. That's Kid Ola. Kid Ola. From what I'm you've from heard so far. I'm from Nigeria. I live in Nigeria. Okay, tell me, Kid Ola, what you've heard so far. How you know? What do you want to add on to that? What I want to add is the problem with with uh, this uh, meta here people is just because um, some of them really never really uh, have contact really deep for so long to other Africans, to other people, and and this some of these people have mental illness and the educational level is very very low you know and what kid can... Ola, kid Ola, yeah. i understand but you know we've all when we heard this xenophobia you know a few years back and it's still ongoing well, that was method especially to war against nigerians yes in, yeah right? yeah it's all about it's all about self-esteem yeah see, but now but now yeah. this person yeah. is now trying to spread that same hatred He's saying, literally in many words, this is how black Americans should respond you to see, Africans black, that come to America. Yeah, because black uh, black Americans or FBA have no country. America does not belong to the America belong to the white to the white people that discover it there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you understand? Yes. Look, my father, my father came to United States to study. They were the first alma maters of uh, AM uh, mm -hmm. at Agricultural Missionary University. When when that investment was being funded in Tallahassee, Florida, you understand? Tallahassee, nice. Yeah, nice. Tele yeah, Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. My my, if you if, when I checked my father's album at that time when I was very small, I could say he have a lot of white friends. You yes. understand? Mm -hmm. Most of his lecturers are white friends. You know, mm -hmm. he did his PhD in, in that place, then he left. Yeah. You understand? So once you can see that when, when Africans came over to United States, first of all. They look at the black people. They want to paint that towards them, but they have what called shock in their life because um, it's, it's it's just it's just different. My father never told me about anything about racism when he came back home because it doesn't home. exist. It's a made up. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It, it, for him, is everybody. You know, love everybody. You treat everybody individually. You understand mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. You know, because he came to United States, he studied, then he left, and most of his friends are white lecturers, professors, and all those things. You know, but I've never known nothing about racism at all. But well, that's how we would be when you come to America, right? Yeah, majority of America, almost like 70% is white. Some yeah. states, some places you would go to, you will not see a single, I mean single black person. So if okay? FBA, I've traveled if around, I've traveled around America. Yes. Okay. I know exactly. That's why when the, some of these people say, we built America. What about the places where there isn't blacks at all? The Who white built man, those places? The, the white man built America. You, you get the white man. You, you know the history. You know the history. You know the white man built America. Let, let me just tell you the truth. 
FBA or ADOS cannot do that nonsense they're doing in South Africa in the United States. The law, the law will get hold of them. You understand? Mm -hmm. These guys are just scammers. They're taking the, the you see, they're scamming their own people themselves. You know, these guys eat out of this um hatred. Yes, race they hustling. Talk, they, talk, they talk, they talk, and okay, okay, uh, I want to do bad day, send me money, uh, I want to build mechanic shop, which everything just lie. But the, 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 the what I could tell you about this is uh the Caribbeans have more a little bit closer to us in yeah. terms of the food, in terms of the way they behave. You can understand that these black Americans are actually isolated for a very long time. It was, yeah. it was in fact, normal. in fact, today is Friday, it's one of those days I love like when I finish the show, I am going getting me uh uh jerk chicken, plantain, uh fried uh dumpling uh from the jamaicans and uh, rice and beans yeah they are far more closer to us in terms uh -huh. of mentality we can easily relate to the to the caribbeans than the black americans yes easily in mentality and in everything the black americans you know today you today they are they are like white tomorrow they are green you, you, are Ola, kid Ola, kid Ola, let me ask you you seem to know black americans quite a bit have you ever lived in america my uncle married to a black American person, but that woman is very educated with a banker. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because and what you're saying, that, that flip-flopping, today that green, tomorrow yeah, blue, yeah, you yeah. got it right on point. You can't, you can't really trust. You can't really trust because that's just the way they run their games. They can be today. Look, I've come across them because, you know, I've, I have a good life here, you know, in Nigeria. I have a good job and everything. I don't mm -hmm. need to go to South Africa. I don't need to go to uh, United States. Mm -hmm. You understand? I, the job I'm doing is it pay me a lot here. You know, I work with the oil. I order do in other the oil cultures. industry. Very you know, good, good, good work. Other, good other work. cultures also yeah. to make myself yeah, very, very good. You know, you see, Kid Ola, let me, because some of, some of these people, I just came back from Gambia, right? Not long. But a lot of the things people say online, you're in Africa, and I've also seen, they think that everybody, especially West Africa, everybody wants to come to America. And I tell them it's not true. They no, think no, I'm no, making no, it up. No, no, Can you no. tell them there is, you know, not everybody no, wants look, to come. Look, it's people, very few. People in Nigeria make more money than if you go to United States, because then you have to start again. And mm -hmm. the network, to build a network in a new place is very, very difficult. Because right. here in Nigeria, Friends and friends and help. You see, mm -hmm. Africans are different. The African people are different. I don't know, in Gambia, they might have what call the, the, the elder in some certain areas. Mm -hmm. If you misbehave, they will straight you up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You, you start? But yes. Black Americans don't have those kind of um, system whereby if you, if you misbehave, you have to be straight up. They, Look, you see, I know this over here. Over here. Even I, the I, little I, children. I, even I, the I'm kids. Not, they can I'm call the police. I'm not saying all of them are bad. No, not all. Not all. Uh, but even the kid. I've seen females. Kid. They call the police and that, put the, their own father behind that guy, bars. That, that guy called two Niger. That guy yeah. called two Niger. That pretended guy. Ha. That guy is a disgrace. It's a, it's a big disgrace to the Nigerian community. It's you a know. guy who just wants to be on the show. Mm -hmm. and, Kendra, and always say, um, look, Nigeria is not a Pan-African country. Thank you. You know, you know what, you know, Kid Kid Ola. I'm glad you being from Nigeria. Address this two Niger, you know, guy, please, because two Niger, he's made it to a point where I, he made Nigerians look so bad. Oh yeah, yeah. So bad. Two, two Niger live in a country that provide everything for him. You're standing. Maybe have a job there. He have a good whatever he's doing there. Possibility if he have enough money, remain. Maybe send it to his family to have a good life. To Niger is a guy, you live in a country that provides you everything. And the, this country is a white man country. Mm -hmm. And he's blaming the white man still. He's, blam he's, he's blaming the white man. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, the, Nigeria is only an African country. Nigeria is a business country. Thank if you. you have, it's just you like have, America. Just like America. Have, yeah, Nigeria don't want to hear your sad story. Thank you. Because that cannot make them to build their mansions or live life that they want to live so, in. You understand me? Uh, Let's allow N N N G to uh, N G. Uh, yeah, where are you calling from? So I'm I'm Nigerian myself. I'm a Nigerian woman. Um, where I you go calling? Back and forth between Nigeria and America, 
in uh, America. We're, we're in America. I'm currently in America right now. Yeah. Okay. What part? What part? So I'm in Minnesota. Um, Minnesota. Okay. Tell us what a, what's your contribution? Go ahead. And can you hear me? Go ahead. My what? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we're listening. Can you hear us? You guys are echoing. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay. While she figured it out, we would get um, Mr. St. James in. St. James, you know, um, what do you want to add? You being from the United States, you know, from Africa like myself, but you live in the United States. Um, about this South African thing, what do you want to add onto this from what you've heard, especially being in this country? Thank you for having me today again, uh, for Damas, man. Uh, no problem. Thank you for calling in. Oh, man. So, sorry. You, 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 you got caught up in the metrics there. I was just calling in because of the things that I've heard. You know, me being a West African living in America, you know, and based on the things that the South African said, Mm -hmm. It's a problem for us, right? So, and we need to address it. And I respect the fact that you are bringing it for us to see it, because mm -hmm. our the South Africans are being a little disrespectful to us West African. Like you said, you said you are not welcoming in your country. You don't want us there, right? And you right. said the white people are inviting, and we took the invite. We came to America, and it's still a problem. So I don't understand that, you know. And I would have, I would have loved for him to call because he calls on shows, right? But today I, mm -hmm. I believe he's not going to call. So I want I, I want him I want him to come here and give us the stats about the xenophobia the xenophobia being perpetrated by West African here in America. We want to see some stats, mm -hmm. you know, so we can compare the things that we do here and the things that they say, you know, and to, to provide a better you know, better information to the people. You know, I don't, I hate the lies. I hate the fact that he calls on black American shows and trying to link up. If you want to link up with black Americans, leave West Africans alone. Go ahead and do that. You know, if you love black American, you want to make money with black American, you want to build with black Americans, go ahead and do that. Leave us alone. We're, we, West Africa are not in your way. Yeah. Well, we are not in your way. Christopher, Christopher Ken says, so, you now all hating on on all South Africans. No, 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 no. All listen. The other day they were talking about Lucky Dube, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you, you and I know how Lucky Dube was popular in Africa, right? Oh, I love Lucky. Dube. Okay, so how how can we come here and hate on South Africans? You know, he's the one that sings this. Hey, you Rasta man. Hey, you European. Indiana well, yeah. man. You got to get sang... together as one. Right, right. That's different right. color. One different people. Different color. <laughs> one one people. people. You know, back so, in the third grade, I was the best singer there. So I used to sing this song. Come on. We know our history. That's we right. know our history. We know South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know? But that xenophobia that comes from their country is really mind-boggling, and we want to address that. I know, it, although, like we we from the we, we from the west side, although we have problem with some of our our you know neighbor ne neighboring countries uh, citizens, mm -hmm. we never took machetes and displayed that on TV and talk on in front of white people that we're gonna kill them. We want them out of our country. That's problems. That... Mm -hmm. Problems. We had them. We had problems in West Africa. We dealt with the problem, but never in my life I saw this kind of image being put on TV about other foreigners, black foreigners. That's shameful, bro. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they turn around and say, West African, we have Z we are xenophobe? No, no. We, Come it, on, man. I don't, I don't know. Like you said, there's might be issues there, but not xenophobia. Not xenophobia? No. No xenophobia? No, West, West Africans will never, those, the countries will never go for that. You know, never our people that. will, we would never ever stand you see, by and you, allow that. You see the similarity, right? You mm -hmm. see the similarity with black American, right? They always think after white, they come next. Any other group that will challenge them over anything will be a problem. So mm -hmm. yes, some, Af some, some Nigerian can go to South African, drop Bentleys and Maserati. Yeah, 
I will rub them the wrong way because they will feel that they should be next on driving those cars. Mm -hmm. They will feel like having the type of money this Nigerians display over there. I think that's what, you know, when the, 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 the Nigerian guy was talking, I understand because when even when Nigeria <laughs> comes to Burkina Faso, some people felt the same way. Like, yeah, this guy, how do they get their money? If you get close to them, you'll understand how they hustle. Mm -hmm. They don't hate the game. Hate the player. Let's have uh, uh, Mad Dog Ogane in. Mad Dog Ogane, thank you for calling in again. Uh, we have Kid Ola here, St. James, Mr. Africa. So I want to hear your contribution, you know, Ogane. I know you have a lot of smoke for South Africans. What do you think about the, you know, this hatred towards uh, the South African man spreading against West Africans all the way in America? First of all, I want to shout out to Kido. Kido, are you there? You're echoing. Hey, my brother, I'm hearing you, man. I'm hearing you. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what part of the country are you from? I, I, you know, uh, I'm from uh, original. My father is a Yoruba, but my mother is from a Doe state. From a Doe state? Yeah. Oh, so you get a pass. You get a pass. I was going to say... You know that oil job you work in there? Yeah? The oil belongs to the Niger Delta region and that. So we're going to come chasing you when we're my chasing. One love, one you're still love. You're still in our jobs. So we're going to come chasing you when we're my chasing. No, 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 I'm just joking. Is, you know, I've, I've the king to run to. You know, you know, here in Africa, we have kings. We have, uh, we can fight, but we don't kill each other because we tomorrow with each other. You know, you see the love we have. You see, West Africa is almost the same people. Just different type of tribes that came out of West Africa. We have the yeah, same. Exactly. We have the same uh, ranking system. You, have you ever seen a West African country going <laughs> to war with other West African country? No, it's a no, not system. really. Mm. Not really. But what I'm gonna say about the um the content so far, I say look, Africans have I've not necessarily been able to be live on some of those shows that you watched over the past few days. Mm -hmm. However, if I, if I was um around for the live streams, I would have watched. I would have literally called into some of them, but some of them have been like nerve striking. Because I was the playback. Can you, can you fix your your audio? Are you are you like on an earpiece? You're kind of fuzzy a little bit. No, you're can saying you hear something. Me? Can you hear me yeah. properly now? Yeah, we can hear you. It's just a bit fuzzy. You saying you know we want to hear everything you're saying. Just just let me know if it's still fuzzy. I might try to go out and come back in. It's like it's it's. Is echoey. It's echoey. Maybe the other guy is mute. If they should mute. Hold on. If the other guy should mute. Okay, go ahead. Say something. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like I was saying earlier on, I think it was nerve striking listening to what's um watching the playbacks of those videos of those live streams. Yeah. And most of them, we know, it's been over the past few days, and I know the shows and these characters you're talking about. I think the reason these guys are called into these shows, really, is not necessarily them trying to gain some kind of consensus on YouTube or whatsoever. But I just think it's low self-esteem. Self like, you were having a, um, an argument with some East African the other day on Kezo's channel, I think. Correct me if I'm mistaken. And oh, he was oh, saying, oh, the guy, oh, the guy that was uh, uh, Ethiopian guy. Oh, yes, Ethiopian, Ethiopian. Yeah, the, 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 the Ethiopian, he, the Ethiopian crybaby. Yes, I remember. Yeah, and if you if you listen to his argument, it was it has the same pattern as the Lozi's argument. The South African guy Lozi it has the same pattern as his argument. He's mm -hmm. pretty much trying to pander. They call it to show pander to some other group of people that they feel have more leverage in on these YouTube platforms. Than other people, which the other people are Africans. You get what I'm saying? I just think I feel like it's low self-esteem. Even when they go to their countries, they attack other African migrants. However, they don't attack migrants from all across the face of the planet, from every other continent other than Africa, especially West Africa. And it's almost like it's just a low self-esteem thing, really. Yeah, but you get what but, I'm saying? But, They're but, looking for the low-hanging fruit to, to whip yeah. him. You get what I mean? Yeah, but but why? You, you know, I get it. Like maybe he said in his country, there's they go after people, but now he wants to spread, spread that same savagery, you know, across. He wants black Americans 
to be the same way, like saying, oh, you guys got to stand up for your people first. We all know that. That's common sense. No, mis misery loves company, as a matter of fact. But what I think what he called into that show to do is to, is to pretty much get a, a pat on the head or on the back from but what, what, a group what, of people what, who feel their, their, their consensus on YouTube is very important to him because of his low self-esteem. But you know why I mean? do they, why do these people that were on there, they said they, they fancy, they are, into, they are West Africans, they pride themselves as that. Why did they not push back on what he was saying? I'm not saying agree or disagree. I mean, it's based on who was there. Which West African was there on that panel? Was it uh, uh, one of the Nigerian princes? Two Niger. One of you guys is prince. Two Niger was there. Uh, the uh, the and real Nigerian prince, Prince Dinos, was the one running the show. No, first of all, Prince Dinos is no Nigerian. Just got a passport. Don't make but his sign. He don't even live there. He's not. He's got two. I don't think he's accumulated two years of his life in that country. You can't be from there. You uh, know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's, it's common sense there. Two Niger, we already know the, what what the brother is on. I don't get the brother at all. He just sits there, he just hums hum, 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 to everything. And flipping. I don't I know. Show, about a few shows ago, I had a notification with him. I show was getting for a few seconds because he was trying to cut me off. I was trying to speak logic into the, the conversation. Because he thinks it's coming from a reasonable perspective. He wants to be the logical guy in, in every situation. But sometimes it cannot be logical with people that are irrational in, in do, their do pattern he, of thinking. Do you think Tunaja might be undercover Ghanaian? That just wants to make Nigerians look bad. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. Because I don't the want the to come come for you. The, 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 the guy asked. The guy asked is from Nigeria, but it's a. Uh, he talk. Um, he talk weak, and he talk um, uh, stupid. You know, he wants to create. It, it, look, do not just try to portray Nigeria as a pan African country. Yeah, Nigeria, exactly. Nigeria exactly. is not a pan African country. But Nigeria love Africans, just the way uh, Julius Nyerere and those other great Af West African leaders and East African leaders help South Africans to, um, yeah, to to have their independence. But you see, West Africa fought for their independence and they and they have it. You see, South Africa not real like that. They just okay, you put to be free. Okay, you can take this part, this kind of political part. We control the economy. You see, FBA. FBA, whatever, black Americans, they just say, okay, we can make you, okay, no more slaves. You know, change the game. Let's let's be in the same, um, let's fight, uh, live together as peace. Uh, the Caribbeans fought for the independence. They, 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 you know, they have it. If you check these people, their self-esteem are very, very high. If you check West Africans, West Africans' self-esteem are very high. We stand, we look. We're not intimidated. We just go straight. Okay, what is going on? I want to know what's going on. Look, I live here. I have everything here. I have my job everything here. I don't need to come to United to do what? I have a lot of history. My father was there. He's at the 70s. Yes. Yeah. Was well, this by the Nigerian government to study? You yeah. understand? He came back. He told me a lot of things. He told me nice about white people. He told me nice about white people. It's lecturers. It's professors. Yeah. How nice they are. They, they will write each other. You understand me? They write each other as, hey, how you doing? Understand what it is. It's Abu is full of white people. Well, like I said, in in America, the white population is almost 70%. If if white people are like they try to tell us, trust me, you don't even nobody has to tell you. You will know because they are the majority. Yeah. Just, you know, even when he when he when he mentioned when he mentioned West Africans. Uh, when you mention West Africans in politics here in America, how many West Africans do you know are in politics here in America? You will have mm. to think of it, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them are East Africans for yeah, the most East part. Africans for the East most Africans. part. East Africans. We're not mm. even in the politics like that. We're not even in on their way. So when these people talk, I, I usually like, I usually sit here and I'm like, you say you don't travel, right? You love your country. You don't travel. You don't need to travel like West Africans. But you are providing information that are misleading, mm -hmm. you know. It's very misleading because us here, we live in America, so we can call on this show and debunk everything that you're saying, you know, easily. So um, I called earlier. I, I'm Nigerian myself. I live in a predominant white um, state, Minnesota. So 
Um, <clears throat> with two Ninja, two Ninja is that kind of a man that wants to fit in. He wants to, to feel liked. So that's his problem with two Ninja. With the whole situation with South Africa and this xenophobia, I actually looked, uh, there was a comment that said something about the Dudula Zim, uh, Zimbabwe. I actually looked it up and they actually burnt uh, a Zimbabwe man um, alive because they thought he didn't have papers. So- But, but think about how, how crazy that is. And that actually happened then, they also did the same thing in what 2016 2018 mm -hmm. they, the uh, mm -hmm. yeah there's a there's still a video of this mm -hmm. on on youtube uh it was nigerian men, uh some also tanzania and a kenyan man there was a video where a south african man took a big rock and smashed it on a kenyan man you can literally hear that kenyan man skull cracking wow cracking and mm. that's how bad and just hideous some of these people are. I'm not saying all South Africans are like this, but we know those ones. Mm -hmm. And then them saying that the Lozi dumb guy that called in um, Search Huru's um, page saying, oh, they should choose their, their people first. Everybody knows that. Yes. That's everybody common knows. sense. And But it's, also it's, the thing he's saying, talking about, um, oh, um, you know, put yourself first. These people are here to, to undermine you. You know, like, where is he getting this from? And also saying they would accuse you of xenophobia, but don't, don't go for it. The world. Where he's, yeah. getting them yeah. from is that, where he's getting them from is, okay, you know how with the whole year of return that happened in Ghana, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of these Black Americans went to Ghana, including the FBA and the ADOS. The reason why they went to Africa is because us West African, when we come here, like you said, we work hard, we have confidence, we we're making top jobs, we're everywhere. Then we are the reason why the the white people realize that yes, black people can actually work because they're used to black Americans' ways of working, where they don't either they work some days or they don't work some days. And here we are going to school, getting degrees, working very hard. Mm -hmm. That opened their eyes. And because of that, a lot of Black Americans don't like us for that. It's yes. like we kind of yeah. exposed yeah. their truth. Yes, yes. Because, you know, uh, uh, because let me say this. when they say, again, you know, most of this, the, you've hit right on it. A lot of the issue, because people, they would say, oh, the, these Africans are saying I'm lazy. No, the person is not saying it. Maybe when you come around that person, you can tell for yourself, you know, like mm -hmm. this person is about the job, you know. Um, so so they tend to say, Oh, it is the Africans. I've even heard, you know, talking points where people are like, Oh, these Africans, you know, I'm not like the African. When I go to the job, you know, they challenge the boss, and like, why would you go to a job? Leave your home to go challenge somebody. If you're about challenging people, just stay home, you know, like. A West African or African in general, you come here, you you don't have the time to want to argue with anybody. People have their issues. You're not there for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they, they see well, that as a, like, oh, how dare you let these people know that we are capable of actually working hard? Because if you ask a white man today, describe the difference between an African and, and a Black American, he will tell you that there's a huge difference. And there is, there is a huge difference because we come here, we face our, because from where we're coming from, we know our head has to be correct. We're mm -hmm. coming to America. We have, they have all these opportunities. Why not take it? Because they're coming saying, that, oh, we're, we're taking up their opportunities. We're taking their job. Why didn't you take the job before we came? Exactly. Let me say this, right? Because my phone, my battery is about to go off. So just before I, I, I log off, I see um, NGT092 was trying to fix her accent there. She was probably looking at the chat saying she doesn't sound Nigerian at all. So let's see what you've done there. However, <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, right? I think the drugs that are, maybe you use have heard this or you might have not um, been privy to this information, but I think there's like a drug, like an epidemic of like pretty much hard substance intake in South Africa. So mm -hmm. in a lot of those 
I don't I forgot what they call them again in the Cape Towns and like you know the, the hoods over there, you know, the projects mm-hmm. over there, the ends over there. Like the the those that's where most of the things usually happen in the urban areas and pretty much like there's there's a lot of like drug take the like hard well, substance said, intake said, in those areas. So I think that Niger- plays a role as well. I they think said the Nigerians I think those, they said the Nigerians are giving them the drugs. No, not at all, not at all. The Nigerians might have been part of it, but it only has a small, very small, very number. small level. You get what I'm saying? So it's not you just can't blame a, a group of foreigners for the problem of a, your whole country. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any common sense at all. So I think that's playing a role in it. And however, these people, these youths that are in, involved in these xenophobic attacks, these are pretty much jobless and hopeless youths in life. Yeah, I mean, but, these are but, nobodies. But, that's yeah, that's what that. it is. These are nobodies. So. But, I'm not going to waste my, my blood, sweat, and no, but, strength but on them. Like, hold on. Organe. They might You might see it that way, but these people actually act on the way they think. They kill people. They've 